Hey, this is Aron Rubinowitz for CreativeCow.net. Have you ever created text in Photoshop but then needed to change it after it was imported into After Effects? In a previous podcast, we talked about how easy it was to open a Photoshop document directly from After Effects using the Open in Editor command. But when it comes to basic text, you don't really have to do that. You can actually edit Photoshop text directly in After Effects by converting it to After Effects text. Before I show you how to do that, we need to make sure we import our Photoshop document correctly. You see, this won't work if you've imported your entire Photoshop document as one layer. Once the PSD is imported as an image, After Effects can't tell the text from the rest of the image. So for this to work, when you choose to import the Photoshop document, take the following steps. Choose File, Import, File. Then navigate to your Photoshop document and select it. Then, choose to import as either a composition or a composition with cropped layers. Either of those are fine because they bring in each layer as separate layers. The only one not to use is import as footage because that brings the Photoshop layers in as one layer which, as I mentioned, won't work for our purposes. Anyway, once you've chosen the correct settings, click open to import the file. You'll see that After Effects has created a composition with each layer of your Photoshop document as an After Effects layer. At this point, you might want to copy these layers to a different comp you're already working in, or maybe you just want to format this comp differently. That's up to you. Regardless of what you do with your text layer, if you decide you need to change it, you can select it in the Timeline or Composition window, and then choose Layer Convert to Editable Text. As you can see, in the timeline, the Photoshop icon is replaced with the After Effects text icon. Now, if you double-click on the layer, you can edit the text. Not just that, this text is now standard After Effects text and you can add text preset animation or your own text animation directly to the text layers. Okay, so that's the good news. Now some bad news. Rasterized text is not supported. That means if you've added any filters to the layer in Photoshop, such as a blur or a distortion effect, the text can no longer be converted to editable text in After Effects, or really in Photoshop for that matter. Once you add an effect to a text layer and it rasterizes, the text icon disappears in Photoshop, meaning you can't edit it there either. On the upside, you can get a lot of the same effects in After Effects that you can in Photoshop. And in After Effects, effects are non-destructive, meaning that even with effects, you can still alter the text, which you can't do in Photoshop. So if you're designing in Photoshop for After Effects, it's probably better to just add effects to the text directly in After Effects. Another piece of bad news is that not all Photoshop layer styles are supported in After Effects 7, and those that are supported aren't always supported well. For example, here I have this Photoshop document with a text layer that has three layer effects applied to it. Drop Shadow, Outer Glow, and Stroke. If I were to import this Photoshop document into After Effects, you'd see that After Effects turns our one text layer into three separate text layers. A layer for the source text, a layer for the drop shadow, and a layer for the outer glow. So now you have a layer for each Photoshop layer effect instead of one layer with all of the effects. You'll also notice that the stroke effect is missing, and that's because After Effects 7 doesn't support this and some other layer effects. And the ones that it does support never look exactly the same as they do in Photoshop, as you can see. And while it's a pain that you now have three layers instead of one, the good news is that you can convert each of these three layers and make them editable text, as we've discussed. Of course, anytime you want to change the text, you now have to change it for all three layers. However, using an expression, you can link the source text from your main text layer to all of your other text layers, so you only have to update the text on one layer. To do that, select all of the converted text layers and hit UU to reveal all properties not set to their default value. And as you can see, this reveals many properties including our source text property. I'm going to close up a few of these twirl downs so that I can see all of my source text properties. I'm working in a limited 800 by 600 space for capturing this video, so I need the room. Okay, good. Next, in my text drop shadow layer, I'll alt click or if you're on a Macintosh, option click on the stopwatch for the property called source text and then I'll use the expression pick whip to link it to my main text layer's source text property. I'll click enter on the number pad to confirm the expression. Then I'll do the entire thing again for my outer glow layer's source text property as well. Now every time I update the text in the main text layer, all three layers update. 
I also want to mention that the effects for these layers are special effects in that they aren't effects directly available in After Effects. If you select one of the layer effects text layers and then hit E on your keyboard to show any effects, you'll see that the effect has a name like Photoshop Outer Glow or Photoshop Drop Shadow. If you search through your effects menus, you won't find them anywhere in After Effects. Go ahead. I'll wait for you right here. Do, 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 do. You know what? I have things to do. You'll have to take my word on this for now and let's just move on. The cool thing is that you can play around with the Photoshop layer effects directly in After Effects. Pay attention though, the effects properties aren't exactly the same as they are in Photoshop. In fact, I suspect that these are just clever combinations of standard After Effects effects but packaged in a different way to simulate something close to Photoshop layer styles. That said, I do like the way they're packaged and controllable. And even better, if you like any of these effects, you can just copy and paste them directly into other layers or even save them as effects presets that you can use on layers in a different project. Pretty cool, right? Now, for those of you thinking that you can do the same thing we've covered here with Adobe Illustrator text, well, not so much. Illustrator text cannot be converted into editable text in After Effects 7. Sorry. On the other hand, you can take text including information about color and stroke directly from Illustrator by selecting the text and then choosing Edit Copy. Just to be clear, I don't mean select the text object, I mean double click to get into the editable text and then select the text you want to copy. Then in After Effects add a new text layer or double click on an already existing one to edit it and then choose Edit paste. As you can see, the text comes in looking more or less the same. You can do the same thing with Photoshop text, by the way. And since we're on the subject of Illustrator, you probably know that in Illustrator, you can convert text into outlines, which is a fancy way of saying that you can convert your editable text into the shape of your text. Since the text is no longer dependent on a font and is really just the outline of your text, if you send the Illustrator file to a client, you don't have to worry that they don't have the same fonts that you have. The text can no longer be changed unless you retype it, but this makes sure that your clients see exactly what you see. In fact, if you're producing any printed materials such as a DVD label or poster, the print house will often ask you to submit two different versions of your artwork, one where text is outlined and one where the text is still editable. After Effects also has a similar feature for outlining text. If you select a text layer and choose Layer, Create Outlines, After Effects will create a solid layer with masks that perfectly match the shape of your text. You could copy these masks to other layers for any number of purposes, such as creating strokes or using the Vegas effect, or maybe for use with a third-party plugin like Trapcode 3D Stroke. If your text isn't animated, you can also use it to prevent workflow issues such as a missing font. Not that I do this, but in a pinch, it's there for you. There are some big downsides for creating outlines though. For example, After Effects only respects the shape of the source text, ignoring any outline strokes you've added in the characters palette. Also, if your text is animated, whether by hand or through a text animation preset, when you create an outline, After Effects will only capture one frame, the current frame of the text animation. And if you're thinking, well, I can just do an outline at every frame, again, not so much. It's not that you can't capture every frame in an outline, but one of the issues with text presets are that because they are driven by a certain amount of randomness, when you add a new layer, and remember, creating outlines does just that, as you can see, the position of individual characters changes at random. So to some degree, After Effects creates its randomness based on factors such as how many layers are in the composition and a few other seemingly unrelated things. As a result, if you try to outline your text, you would end up with an animation in which letters were randomly appearing and disappearing. Nothing cohesive that you could use in an animation. The only solution I can think of for this, and it's not a great one, is to do an auto trace, a process that frame by frame copies a layer. You can select your text layer and then from the menu choose Layer Auto Trace. Now I'm not going to get into the specifics of auto tracing here. I cover them in my tutorial called Super Tight Junk Mats, which you can find at Creative Cow. But the gist of it is that auto tracing can trace the alpha channel or other channels of a layer over the course of its animation. When the auto trace is complete, you get animated masks that match the motion of your layer. 
The problem is that even with some very tight settings, it'll never be perfect. Alas, not every solution is. But perhaps this long-winded exploration of these text-based features will provide you with some new ideas and solutions. Once again, this is Aaron Rabinowitz for creativecow.net.